the Mick Brick and it show with Mick Brick and it. Hello everybody, it's Mick Brick and it here with a very special episode of the Spooky Skull Cup post-match report. And just for clarification's sake, I've seen your comments online. Mick, why is the show called the post-match report when some of it takes place during the halftime break? You're so handsome, by the way. Please, have my children, by which I mean impregnate me and take custody of my existing ones. Well, Sally, age 29, I'm very flattered, but I'm sure you and your children are very ugly, so I'll pass. As always, I'm joined by my co-host and a man who has been on fire recently, Keith Tooswiddle. How are you doing today, Keith? That's great, Keith. And uh, if you don't mind me saying, you're looking extremely sharp this afternoon. <laughs> you really have a way with words, Keith. Today's game is probably our most anticipated game just behind the grand final. The Underground Half Pints versus Laboubatar. Stunty on Stunty, Troll on Tree. Two mighty titans fighting for their spot in the league. A win for either team spells disaster for the other and their chances of getting into the final. It certainly has been an interesting half so far, with bombs and players flying all over the pitch. I believe we have a brief interview with a member of the crowd who was almost hit by a flung fungi. <laughs> well... I'm sure he's fine, but if not, I'm sure his ugly widow will be pleased to be free. Call me. It seems the Snotlings have really buttered up their hands for this game today, as they absolutely cannot seem to grab the ball. <laughs> Keith, you know a thing or two about slippery situations and butter. Remember Mexico? Oh yes, Mick. I remember it vividly. I was completely at fault for everything that happened down there, and this is admissible in court, as I swore in a Bible before this episode began. Keith say the darndest things, don't they? The half concludes with a 1-0 lead for the halflings, after a cumbersome touchdown by Alfred Roadblock, the heftiest of all the halflings. And I don't think it's big-headed of me to say that I think I could take that little bastard in a fight. I was voted most likely to win a fight against a smaller and weaker opponent of my college. Tune in after the break, as Keith and I will report on the second half of this stellar match. And in the meantime, I believe we have an interview with both of the coaches of both teams. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, it's Mick Brickin' it here with another interview for you. Now, we've been receiving a lot of reports that people are not okay with the F-bombs that we've been dropping constantly throughout all the interviews. So, I'm gonna have to ask you gentlemen to keep it a little bit clean today. All right then, Mickey, you PG cunt, you can have what you want. Now, today we have a special interview, which is the coach of both teams, Niel Warnock of the Snotlings and Harry Kane of the Underground Half Pines. How are you doing today, gentlemen? We're bloody flying! We won Neil in, we haven't even done our drive yet! Thanks for that, Neil! Can't believe I'm talking to this fucking southern piss baby and this dead wife fucker. Well, at least Sandra, I think there's still a little bit of breath in her lungs. It was still legal. Probably. Oh, I bet the whole fucking house on this, and I'm losing to these lot. Hey, <laughs> bloody life savings, I'm gonna be swimming in it. Danny's going to even love it. He wasn't even on the pitch and he's going to be rolling in the money. Oh, I swear to God, I will, I will incinerate Danny's cat if you mentor him one more in time, lad. You can do whatever you want for him. Ainsley's going to have him in a soup next week anyway. I don't play, okay? Oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Sorry, um, we're just, we're trying to mitigate your fucking chef bad end if you will, by uh, cooking up some stuff from our own, from our French origins. Sorry, I hope they're bloody patented. Yeah, we've got some um, mushroom shoe pastry bites that the uh, our fungus flinger is uh, bringing. I was actually bringing in just, what the fuck is that? What is that? It's in a boot. Shoe is French. It starts with a CH. Put it back now. Yes, and take the soul out. Surrounded by fucking idiots. Don't forget the donkey shit, you little green bastard. You'll bring out the shoe in it. Now, gentlemen, please keep it clean. We are live on the air. Now, it's been quite the half so far. The As it stands, the halflings will be going into the league final. How do you feel about that? Uh, just first of all, Mickey, are you, uh, you going to have that lamb? For, for your own purposes, or could I perhaps acquire one for some certain activity? That is my sister. 
Oh, well, better yet then. Sit her on me. No, no, sit her on me. We need a consultant. No, put her on me. I've got a stronger one. I'll be bigger to her. We'll be the right size, we will. I've got cushions on me pelvis. She'll be great for me to sit on. Well, I've got bloody velvet fast that my mother gave me. She'll be slipping her hair like a bloody banana. You slippy five dandy shite. Not a cocking chance will I not swear when there's a fucking halfling in the room. Not a cocking chance I won't have a cocking good time on that bloody sister of yours, Mickey. <laughs> Send her damn more way. With all due respect, gentlemen, I would appreciate if you stopped objectifying my sister. That's my job. I'll now, tell you what, I've had an idea. She's got an orifice, right? A double orifice. We go, right, Neil, Neil will take it from... I'm going to cut you off right there, Mr. Kane, because that is just absolutely vile and... I don't even want to know where you're going with that, but I'm Mick, sure Mick, it was- it's, called, it's called Eiffel Towering, right? I'm Back aware of the, the name of the process. I do not need to. No it's, one on the show needs to hear it out loud. It's elegantly cultural, Mick. That's it. I used to do that with the obgoblin down the end of the street, Eiffel Towering. Yeah, she loved that shit. I did get chlamydia from her, though, so we don't speak anymore. I mean, it's just part of the course, isn't it? it We've all been there. Needs must. It still burns. You should definitely see a doctor. It shouldn't still burn. It, it's very curable. I'll have you know that I have been to one doctor and he said it was terminal. Gentlemen, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but the camaraderie I'm seeing between you about fucking my sister is not very pleasant to me. I'm more interested in talking about the game than which you are both managing teams for. Can we please discuss the game? All right, the game. Well, well we've probably lost. We can't pick up the ball. But we probably will pick up your sister. We'll just need to, um, you know, think about how we're going to throw our teammate into the end zone, potentially, like um, like a pitch at your, your sister's pants. Don't be silly, Neil. No throw against the pitch is going to be as easy as one against his sister's pants, all right? There's no bloody way. We've got one, Neil. We're having the ball. Nothing short of a frigging... I don't know, a thunderstorm or a, or a bloody lightning or losing a tree, man, will set us away from winning that bloody final. You're fucked, Neil. You're fucked. You know what? I may be fucked, but at least I enjoyed it. I wasn't bottom. Oh, you will enjoy it, boy. You bloody will enjoy it. Slabbing my cockney off in Venus up your rectum like a bloody feather duster at you, man. Well, as long as you bring the Gorilla Glue and that nurse outfit, we'll be right as rain. Oh, you speak in my language, Neil. You speak in my language. I'll show you my chutney tunnel as well. Your, your chutney shovel. Your... You know, gentlemen, this has been a time. Uh, and I honestly did not expect to see such camaraderie from two combatants in the league. Yeah, you know, it's been um, it's been fantastic. Um, us little guys have got to stick together, you know. And... Uh, I think that even though these snotlings love a bit of food and love to steal and uh, generally miserable cretins, that, uh, you know, our stunties have got to stick together through a thick and thin, uh, long and small, chaos warrior and Amazonian blitzer. You know what, Neil, I echo that. I really do. I, uh, you know, we may get a little green under the gills that we're not actually green under the gills, but uh, at the end of the day, I will stick together with you. Because we're the little guys, you know. Little guys have got to keep together. And uh, with a bit of luck... I'm going to triumph for you, I will. I'll make it to this final. And uh, for you, little man, I will. I will. I will. Barring any exciting incidents. Yeah, I mean, what could happen? What could happen? It's, it's been perfectly clear all day. And like, Is that rain? Do I see rain? Do I see bastard rain? Oh, we've got the tallest players on the pitch. They're going to light up like a bloody Eiffel Tower. The building, not the sexual manoeuvre. <laughs> And we are back. What a fantastic game of Blood Bowl we have just witnessed. A lightning storm beginning the half by striking down a halfling in his prime. Luckily, as we know, lightning never strikes twice. I'm just getting reports now that lightning did in fact strike two more times during the half, resulting in the KO of a stilty runner for the Snotlings. I guess you can't trust superstition, but that won't stop me from kicking every black cat I see on the street. Your thoughts on the half, Keith? Some bold words there, Keith, but you're not wrong. The Snotlings pulled out one of the most disgustingly amazing touchdowns that I have seen in my long, but not too long to suggest I'm old, career. 
Scored by a member of the crowd, no less, rookie music producer David Sweater takes the Snotlings into the final. I believe we actually have a live feed to the manager's reactions to that touchdown right now. No! Oh, it's live! What are we going to do? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, I'm on a fucking rush now. I can't believe it. Oh, my money. God. We have so oh. much money to so many people. What's Danny going to do? What are we going to do with Danny? He didn't even play this game. Oh, oh. boy. Oh, I don't know about you, but everyone's getting a Volkswagen Sirocco on me tonight. Oh, I love it. Oh. Just Cavani. We should vlog that. Does anyone oh. want some Ralph Lorraine jeans? Oh, God. Oh, I feel like I'm two again. And with that one all draw. The halflings are out of this league. A sad day for those who supported them, and an even sadder day for Mr. Harry Kane, their manager, who reportedly disappeared rapidly from the stadium once the final whistle was blown, with a fearful look in his eye. Oh, I'm just getting reports that someone has video footage of whom they believe to be Mr. Kane. Let's see that now. So yeah, basically, it's a, it's a 2000 model. Pedals are pretty solid. Little bit of brakes on it, you know. It's got... What's that noise? Oi, what are you doing to me dog bin? Yes. Don't worry me, I'm just a passing trevor. What? You look like Harry Kane, you do, mate. Not Harry Kane, but if I was, I might know a certain Ainsley Care. It's quite a lot of money. What animal's there from? <laughs> it's a sheep. What are you on about? Got any cow, leave it out the front for two weeks. I'll have that. Oh, a strange man. Well, that seemed extremely on brand, and Ainsley, if you're out there watching, you're doing God's work. Keith's a huge fan of your meals, aren't you, Keith? I thought I could do this, but I can't. I think by now it's clear that Keith Toswiddle is not really here. I thought that with him gone that my life would be easier and better in every way, and... I hate to admit it, but I think I was wrong. I think what I have realized is that the reason I love to do my job and everything outside of it is because of Keith Toswiddle. Without him, I feel a sense of dread, and emptiness, and confusion, and anger. I don't enjoy this feeling, this weakness, this... I think what I'm trying to say, dear listeners, to put it simply, I think I miss Keith. We do not need to speak, to praise each other. Worship instead with careful smiles and fumbled passes, warm heart. Holding out on cold pitch, empty space in my chest, taking root, filling up at the sight of you. Can you believe I never knew? All this history between us, this whole time, it's been you.